It's got like an articulating moves, jaw yeah. that moves. It's a, yeah, you, I'm not going to say what it is. You got to go check it out. We'll tell you where to check it out later. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, not po- we're not positive where it's going to go. I, it'll be on Facebook and Instagram somewhere, but. Ooh, we should do it on that Facebook Live. Well, you know what? I was thinking about that. Like, we could just do this when we do our episodes. Yeah. The, you know, the six people that listen to us on the podcast. Maybe one of them times will watch 100. us live. Times a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate every single person that yes. is out there taking a listen and all that good stuff. Glad you're in the mood for the season. Oh, it's October first, man. It doesn't feel like it. No, no. It was uh, eighty degrees today. It was. Yeah, it was pretty hot. I didn't even tell you where, what I did today. I don't think. I was in pet water all day. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It was freaking awesome. Yeah, that's my parents have a little. little you were there all weekend. No, just we left this oh. morning. Jeff and I go to church together. You didn't see me at church I, if you went. I didn't. No, nope, we're not there. Me either. We <laughs> brought our camper. We have a camper. And I'm storing it at my parents. Have a little barnuminium. You know what a barnuminium is? That's a new one for me. Is it? I mean, I can envision what it is, but since I've learned that. what it was from them, I've heard it mentioned a thousand times. It's crazy. Wow. So it's a li- they get like a big pole barn. Okay. Huge. I don't know, like several thousand square feet. And then behind it, they built this little tiny apartment with one bedroom, one bathroom. When you say behind it, it's not, is it, it's just attached or? No, it's separate. Separate building. Yeah. They have different driveways, but they're next to each other. You can walk between huh. them easy. But it's like in the woods, you're driving down this Oceana Drive in Petwater. You don't know anything. There's trees and everything. You just think it's a little dirt trail that goes somewhere. You go on there and it's like this mecca of delicious landscaping not sure why i chose the word delicious but it's you appetizing eating it? by eating it today no but it looks so good my stepdad is like is a big he's in the landscaping is his life it's beautiful it's so cool and this big pole bar and then behind you like what's that it's a little apartment building that they live back there it's that's it's awesome a, it's a ride it's and they have this nice property and everything it's cool Nice. But yeah, Barnuminium is just a small little apartment attached with like a, not, it can be attached or separated with a big pole barn, okay. basically. So yeah. Makes sense. Thanks for explaining. Yeah. If you didn't know, if you did, I, I hope that was the definition of a Barnuminium, but that's what I get out of it. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Great weather. Uh, but yeah, we're in the season of fall and uh, October and Halloween and all yeah, that good stuff's coming. My favorite time of the year. You love it, huh? My birthday is right in the middle of the month. My birthday is two days away. What? Yeah. I didn't know your birthday was in October. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mine's the 15th. My mother-in-law is the 14th. Lots of birthdays. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So how are you doing? Doing good. Yeah, doing well. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. We've done some interviews, but not just you and I. No, you're right. It, yeah, it has been. It's had. We've said that several times. It's been a little while. I haven't seen been you. Been a while. Well, I came over to hang out the other week. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we've definitely chatted outside of this, but but yeah, I was down in Kalamazoo earlier or yeah, earlier this week. Uh, Sounds of the Zoo, and you know we talked to Jennifer a couple months ago. If anybody hasn't heard that episode, you guys got to check it out. Awesome. 
Um, I went out for one of the seven days of that festival and uh, thought it was well done. I mean, and that was on a Thursday. They had a jazz scene going at, at the, they call it the Knack Building, I think something or other not nonprofit place. But it's actually, I think there's multiple things going on in the building. It's the oldest, apparently, uh, I learned that evening, that it is the oldest building standing in Kalamazoo that's been around and the one guy wow. said when Abraham Lincoln was here doing his address he that was the, was, would have been the only building that, that existed wow that, really yeah it looks like an old church almost but anyway inside there's a, a comedy theater and that's actually where we were in cool the, cool little setup uh, a lot of tables and just seems like an intimate little place so uh saw a pocket watch play they're a real, I think, relatively new. Mm -hmm. I know they don't have any albums or anything out, but uh, that jazz... tells me that they're pretty new. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But they will have an album out. Ooh, I don't know if it'll be this year still or early next year. But they are hitting the recording studio because they. I was talking to them. They won. Uh, uh, shoot, beat the walk. Uh, walk the beat. Walk the beat. That's right. Yeah. Walk the beat earlier this year, so they won a. Uh, free recording time at uh, Third Coast Radio, uh, Recording in Grand Haven. But I thought they were cool. They were like a, I mean, they're a jazz band, but kind of, I would say jazz rock infused a little bit, like, mm -hmm. and uh, six piece group. And they put on a set for about an hour. And then I bounced cool. over from there. There was more jazz going on later there. And I bounced over to Up and Under, which is about three or four blocks down the road. And uh, that's like a bar. But on the other, there's like two sides. It's kind of a bar restaurant area. And then on the other side is uh, where they have a stage and, and music. And uh, the Kalamazoo Blues Association was sponsoring that event. And Jake Kershaw was in there playing. And he tore up the, tore up the stage. So. Yeah, that's awesome. It's good to talk about Jake Kershaw a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at some point, we'll Youngster. make a connection. Yeah, because he's so, like, I, and he's, he's so good at such a young age. Like, he's got to go places, right? Right. What do you think he is, like 22? He's 22. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Confirm literally that. pulled that out of my butt. Because I had no idea. I was talking to a few people there, and, and uh, I said, yeah, I think I seen him about five years ago in Hudsonville, and uh, he was 17 at the time, so I'm assuming he's 22. They're like, yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's 22, so. Yeah, he is young and talented. Mm -hmm. He is. Sweet. But, yeah, Jennifer had a good week, I think. Uh, 55 artists in eight venues over seven days. So. Wow. Congratulations, Jennifer. Year two, that is impressive. Books. Yep, yep. Year two in the books. You're right. Maybe we'll be a part of a little bit something more next year. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. Definitely. Maybe not. Maybe we won't be recording anymore. I don't know. You never know. My I house hope, could burn down. I hope. I hope not. I hope we're still. We doing could that. just get in a fight and never want to talk to each other again. I mean, my computer died this week. I mean, that's a it's a, that's a sign. It could be a sign. It's a good thing we're not doing it through the computer. Fair enough, buddy, because we improved our game over the last year and three That's quarters. Right. The audio's high quality. We don't need no computer. Just added it after the fact, but. Right. So, you uh, been to any shows lately? Um, I have been to zero shows lately, unfortunately. And I'll pause there because I would like to talk to one I'm going to, but I know you've done some things, so I'll save my piece for later. What have I done? You you just came, you just went somewhere. Sounds of the zoo. I just talked about that. Oh, that was it? Did you black out? No. I thought there was more <laughs> stories to go along with it. I don't know. Um... I, I mean, I, talk I think to I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the atmosphere we're going to be down here talking for like an hour and a half to somebody, but... <laughs> I also realized that we don't have a guest tonight, so our, our conversations are a little shorter. So it's okay. That's right. That's... I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I mean, the only thing to add there is I, I did talk to the a couple people, the Kalamazoo Blues Association, cool group. Maybe we'll talk to them in the future. And mm -hmm. uh, Harry from the Kalamazoo State Theater. That's cool. Have you ever been to the state? I have. Have you? It's been a long time. What, is that the location... Correct me if I'm wrong. You might know this. What was the K Wings Stadium? Is that the? It's not the same. It's not the same. That's no, no, a no, different no, no. thing. Yeah. K Wings turned into another thing that's still there, and they put on shows sometimes. But it's an arena of some kind. Yeah, it's a very small. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. 
think even it's not very big. I've been to there. I've been there as well. I saw Creed there years ago. I I saw Everclear and Soul Coffin there. I does that sound familiar? Because I'm wondering if it was with Creed. Nah. No, I'm trying to think who Creed. There was somebody else who did open for Creed, and I can't remember. I saw was. Creed at the Delta Plex with oh, Oleander, yeah. Oleander, and Our Lady Peace in Creed. Okay, at the Delta Plex in like ninety eight, ninety nine, or something like that. Huh. But the state theater, yeah, that might have been something different. Yeah, I don't know. Was it, do you think it was like late 90s that you saw him? I mean, that's when Creed was popular. It had to have been 97, 98, the, It would have been, it was 99 or 2000. Mm -hmm. I think it was 99 when I saw him. And that was at K, I don't think yeah. it's called K-Wing Stadium, though. It's called. Not anymore. It's not. No, like I don't 20, think it was 30 ever, years ago it was. I don't think they, it was called K-Wing no. Stadium, though. It was called. Um, Why would I think that? Then? Well, that's where the K-Wings played. Oh, that was the team name. Yes, that was the minor league uh, hockey play. Team. Okay, so maybe it. Oh. I'm trying to think of the name of the arena though. But, uh, Joe Louis. Me. Joe Louis Arena. <laughs> Isn't that Kalamazoo? Oh, Detroit. Oh, is that where That's the Red Wings used used to play? Oh, that Tiger Stadium. <laughs> no, Tiger Stadium. They never played there. Now they play at Little Caesars. <laughs> no, now they get Little Caesars for dinner. Okay, gotcha. Dude, all these names, these companies, the businesses that like spend millions of marketing dollars to just get their name in the name of the venue. Like I don't think they play millions of dollars. Dude, they totally do. Fifth Third Ballpark. They had a contract to have it named Fifth Third Ballpark for like a decade. And they paid a, a ridiculous amount of money to get that. And now it's not. Now it's LMCU Ballpark or whatever. What's it called today? Yeah, LMC football park. Yeah, worst name. Right? But it's business names. There's another one. Um, There's the amphitheater coming in downtown Grand Rapids. Yes, it was I just, just saw the name of that company and I'd never heard of them. Because they've only been around for two years. They spent $30 million to get the name of the venue after their business name to help them catapult. Like, how does a new business get $30 million? Now, I know... I think they're in insurance. It's probably over years. So many. It's yeah. probably thirty million up front. Uh, I don't know, but still, that, isn't that crazy though? Like Little Caesars Arena. It used to be what? Little Caesars Arena. <laughs> well, not even. Before. No, that was that was okay. That was always the name. I mean, every Metro Bay calls it the LCA. Okay. So and which is actually sounds cooler. Yeah. The LCA. I'm going to the LCA. Today. Yeah, LCA sounds cooler. But we, you know, it's funny. We had a similar conversation about this a thousand I don't, times. <laughs> I don't know if it was earlier this year. Yeah, it was earlier this year because, remember, Pine Knob for so long was DTE Energy. But for so long it was Pine Knob before. Oh, you're right. But then they finally, the last several years, year. they got out of DTE. Either, I don't know if they kicked them out or they just didn't want to renew the contract. I There was an article about that, and I can't remember if it was at MLive or somewhere talking about the history of the name of Pine Knob and why it was changed, and I honestly skimmed it, forgot about it. But it's something we could look up. Well, the cool thing now is it is, it's Pine Knob is the name, but then it's like sponsored by, and then there's like a couple different businesses, which well, sure. is a way better way to do yeah. it. I love, I'm, it's, it's just sad. Like I love the name, like unique names of a yeah building, a facility. And now it's just, yeah, yeah it's a, a sponsored a corporate names. business name. It's like, it, it eliminates some of the vibe of like why you're going there. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Marketing corporate dollars. I mean, think about it. Like, like, that means beers are going to be 65 bucks. <laughs> you know, Madison Square Garden. I mean, it's got to be one of the most famous. Yeah, perfect. Oh, no, we're just going to, now we're just going to change that to be uh, Papa yeah. John's uh, <laughs> Arena. <laughs> Papa John's. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like, it's ridiculous. I would have said Jets or something, but. I mean, yeah, it's fine if you want to, like, say it's sponsored by something, but still come up with a unique name. In. I do think, what now thinking back, a lot of the names in these places, the name is somewhat local to the place. Like, Little Caesars was started in Michigan, right? I think yeah, Detroit. Right. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that yeah. kind of yeah. makes sense. LMCU, Fifth Third. Oh, I don't know about Fifth Third. I don't know where well, they Well, originally was Old Kent Park, which was which a, Old Kent Bank. And that was a Michigan bank, right? Yes. If that was in Kent bank. County. So it was Kent. That's why it was called Old Kent And that bank. probably got... Turned into Fifth Third. Then they were bought out by Fifth Third, and then Fifth Third just renamed yeah. it. But and LMCU local. is local to us. Yeah. Like, they don't have those in California or Colorado. They do have some in Florida, but it's Michigan-based. But, I mean, I thought, like, even though it was a bank name, like, Old Kent Park, cool name. Yeah, that And works. it's in Kent County. Yeah, that works. 
That works perfect. That's the best. That's a great name. So if you get creative, you could probably make it work. But now it's LMC Lake Michigan Credit Union Ballpark. Yeah, why don't they just have the whole name? They get the yeah, right? Name. Well, LMCU is a lot easier to say. Yeah, well, you know what's easier to say than that? Old Kent. Right. You dummies. Right. I apologize. I'm not calling anybody a dummy. So, somebody <laughs> spent a lot of money to do that. And hey, I, whatever. That's you cool. know, I think the coolest story, and it, maybe this is because I was growing up at the time when this happened, but when the palace was built for the Pistons, there was a contest. To name it. To name it. Oh. And it was... We're not going to, like, name it some spot. And, and, of course, the owner, who, he was really cool. Back in the, it, but, like, he, he wanted to make it named by the community. And he didn't mind sponsorship, all that stuff. Like, name it. And that was that was a pretty cool. And the first one, when they, uh, I forget what the, the top five names were or whatever. But then they finally said the palace. I'm like, oh, that's lame. But then after a while, I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. There's nothing else named the palace. I mean, you're right. That it, it could be a generic like luxury name. Yeah. But there's nothing else called the palace. Well, I think when I first heard it, it I was like, oh, place. it's like where the princesses go. Or yeah. Something, the palace. Yeah. But no, it ended up being. It was cool. cool. Yeah. There was also a a big ship, a big boat of some kind, and this might have been in the UK where they did a a contest to name it. And it was the community. Guy. Like, it wasn't just like a single person got to name it. You could throw in a name. Okay. And everybody voted on all the names. The name of this huge, like, British boat. It, and I think it was in the UK. It, easily, it could have been America. I don't know. They ended up naming it Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. Wow. That is the name of this giant, crazy ship. And I'm, I'm sure I got my facts wrong on where, but I'm pretty right. sure it was like over in the UK or Britain or well, somewhere. Wow, uh, that's, that's a heck of a name. Bodie McBoatface. They should name boats after company. Well, you should, should name your own boat. You imagine the, you buy boat. Imagine the military naming their, oh, we're going to have, we're going to send out the uh, Chick-fil-A. The SS Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. At least America was cool and like named it after like, important people right. i think well usually presidents presidents or i think uh, generals or yeah yeah, yeah. military yeah. like high-end military guys yeah right name two mil like u.s boats name two can you name two I, I should be i well a lot of them are named after states too yeah i just name two it's it, like, like put me on the spot. I know it's not hard though, because I know there's tons. Like the USS Constitution is that one? I, you, I believe. I, I, I believe, believe so. I believe so. I've never heard of that one before. But how many boats are there? It's probably like freaking hundred. Well, yeah, and then the, some of them were, you know, obviously there. I want to say Roosevelt or Franklin was one. The Franklin or the Roosevelt. Like I feel like that was one, but I'm not positive. I don't know. So much, dude. We really don't know. Do we, we need to rename this podcast to. Like aquatic vessel podcast and names that go along with those. What? I don't know what you're what you're doing because we're spending so much time uh, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, right, real thing. Where, 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 where you, please? So tell us where you're going to go see a show. Oh, this is gonna start a whole another diatribe, my friend. I am leaving in a couple days to go to the great state of Nevada. Okay. We're we'll flying into a little city called Las Vegas, and I am so excited. I, this is my third trip to Vegas. The, my other two trips were the year before COVID, and I haven't been back since. So a lot of my friends are into you know gambling, and they're into Vegas like they love it. Yeah. That's that's their jam. So the last time we went, it was actually right before we started this podcast, and I went and saw Tool. Oh Vegas. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. We we were talking about that like at the begin the first couple episodes yeah. a little bit, and then we started talking about seeing Tool and Grand Rapids as the yes. last year went on. Um, but yeah, we're going back to Vegas uh, to see a couple different types of show. Not any music, unfortunately, no bands. Um, but yeah, the the Sphere just opened the last couple weeks. U 2s has been playing there every night or several nights since they've opened. Oh, they are. Is, are they? Is it a uh... The Sphere is... No, but is, is U2... Well, yeah, we got to talk about the Sphere. But is U2 have a... Um, what do they call it? They're basically there for a certain period of time. 
Um, yeah, I, uh, what's the, I know the word you're thinking of. Uh, like a constitution comes to mind because that's what you just said. No, that, uh, yeah, what's that word when a, an artist will like go to a casino four nights a week for six months? Uh, I can't. I or they're there for three years. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. There's, a, there's a name for that, and I'm embarrassed that I can't quickly look it up. For all of you listeners, my desktop computer that we typically use for a lot of stuff died earlier this week. So I have a laptop here that's not turned on. That's not helpful to us. But whatever that word is, yes, it was a short themed one. Like, I honestly think they were just playing a week or two as an opening band, like multiple nights. And that's it. Like, so they're done. Um, I'm pretty sure they're done this week. And... They have some things going on. I think they're doing maintenance. But our night, I want to say it's Thursday or Friday night of this week, is the first showing of the normal Sphere Experience show. Where it's, you know, the craziness. I know if if you know what the Sphere is, if you don't know what the Sphere is, right now, please, Google Las Vegas Sphere. You will see some of the craziest videos that you've ever seen. This building, this amphitheater is huge. You can be 10, 20 miles away and you see this huge sphere in the background and it's all LED lights on the entire outside that displays imagery, 360 all the way around. Sometimes it's an eyeball. Sometimes they make it look like the moon. Sometimes it's just designs floating around. Sometimes it's just all sorts of crazy stuff. And on the inside is the exact same thing, but you're on the inside of a a sphere, so it's circular, right? Mm -hmm. So the screen is the entire cover of where you are is all screen. Three six, it's bonkers. I I can't say it's three sixty. I think it's more of a like a one eight, like behind you. It's not showing it. It's all, but it's above where you can see to the left, right, and above your head, and below you is like it's an amphitheater. So they have, you can do crazy stuff on the screens because it's basically like the biggest screen of information in the world. But it's the acoustics that they built into this because it's an amphitheater, yeah. first and foremost, not a visual display of whatever. They can do that, but it's like one of the best amphitheaters you can listen to a band play at. It's amazing, I'm hearing. So I cannot wait to see a tool there. They Like, tool play there at some point. It will sell out in one second. Tickets will be freaking thousand dollars for nosebleed seats i guarantee it i will be at that show the first night they play whenever it is but we're going to see the sphere show so i'm so excited to see what we're going to see like i don't know it's going to be something crazy right. cool like like just an experience like they're probably going to showcase a lot of dolby atmos like sounding that's going to be cool but the visuals are going to be bonkers like i'm sure it'll be like space stuff or make it look like it's underwater or who knows what. But if you don't know what the sphere is in Las Vegas, please Google it and you will see videos that will blow you away. It's so cool. It's such a cool thing. Yeah, you have to catch us up on it when you get back. Yeah. Absolutely. I would we should interview every band that goes through there. I mean it's not related to Michigan or anything. No, we just need to podcast on the sphere. The sphere. Vegas Somebody get over here. Yeah, start a Vegas podcast. I'm sure someone over there has a music podcast in yeah, Nevada, yeah, right? Probably. The Nevada nincompoops. I don't know. Mitten music. <laughs> like, what, do you, what, do you, what the N? What can you do with the N? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Put me in a spot again. But then when you get back from Vegas, you're thinking about going to another venue. I am. Please remind me. And there's a band there that you... Oh, yeah. I I spaced out there for a second. Oddly enough. (laughs) Where's the drum patter? They have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, Yeah, it's fine. So it's not a funny... But it will be in a second. Yeah. So, friends, we've talked about an artist slash band named Odd Space a couple times on the show. Looking forward, at some point, I really believe we will get to interview, interview the person behind Odd Space. But they're playing October 13th at a venue I've never heard of before. Hey, Jeff, have you heard of speciate, Speciation Ales? 
Speciation Artisan Ales Speciation Cellars. I have heard of it. I had never heard of it. I didn't know that was how you pronounced it. Speciation. I like when you say it. Jeff did not believe me when I kept saying it's called Speciation. He's like, oh, are you sure that's how it's called? I'm like, that's what the name of it is. That's a cool name. That's unique. So it's like it's like a winery, right? Speciation. Kind of? Kind of ish? Yeah, they, they say craft. They say craft beers and something. I think you said something, something about the wine, but yeah, this it was a it was you know could be just wine. It was like a special words to describe it. Lots of adjectives. Speciation occurs when a group within a species separates from other members of its species and develops its own unique characteristics. They're very unique over there. How cool is that? Yeah. Like, now that I know what that word means, that's one of the coolest words that you can use anywhere. Like, literally, that's in my top 10 favorite words of all time, that's in the top 10. How cool is that? So, so they have wine? I don't, I don't know about the freaking wine, man. I don't know. This wine. Talk about speciation? Yeah, I don't know about the wine. I'm sure they have a wine. It does come across like they're kind of a winery, but... Let's say cellars. Yeah, speciation cellars. So I'm sure their website did promote craft beer that I didn't know if that was like they brew their own beer or they mm. just do, they sell craft beers. But it did look like they had some winery stuff there. And the pictures I saw of the atmosphere inside the place looks super cool. It looks like a place I would want to check out regardless if a band I wanted to check out or an artist was going there. But every Friday night, apparently they have free live shows. Perfect. Right. Friday the 13th, the best. I don't think Friday the 13th in October happens too often. No, it probably doesn't. And that's this show. And I'm there's no way I'm not missing it. Friday the 13th, when there's something cool happening on Friday the 13th, I'm there, man. So Odd Space is going to be there. And then yeah. uh, who's opening? A gal named Tessa Clark. Okay. And I have to backtrack one second. It's Tess Clark. And when I see your name, I want to say Tessa, but I believe it's Tess Clark. Very cool. She only appears to have maybe one song out on Spotify. If, if you listen to Odd Space's music at all, you'll kind of get he has a very ethereal, which is a word he likes to use, which I've used several times to just try to describe things. Yeah. I'm so glad that he uses that word to describe his music because that's exactly how I would describe it. Some ethereal, cool you know, rock music. So Tess is open, opening for him. The same, she has a song. It's a little acoustic, but the, the her, her voice and the way they recorded it is very full. It reminded me of a ghost, like it was a ghostly song. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I wouldn't say it was ethereal itself, but it right. vibe. They, her kind of. I music, think those two yeah, hand in hand would be a good for sure. That's good. Combo. So I'm excited to go check that out. I don't get a babysitter too often, but that's going to be a night I'm getting a babysitter. Yeah, so it'll be good. I'm interested to see how that goes. I might, I may try to catch it. I might be able to go. We'll see. Friday the 13th. I mean, what else are you going to do on Friday the 13th? I don't know. i got to look at my calendar. It's not Halloween. It's a Friday. It's not. Kid, you got grown-up kids. They're going to be doing their own thing. Well, yeah, that's for sure. You and your wife are going to be sitting at home doing nothing, being like, damn, you, what's you, Ryan doing man. tonight? You have no faith in me doing anything else. No, you're right. Fair. I apologize. <laughs> I'm totally just making it. You could have the best plans ever. I just don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Don't we share everything though, Jeff? I'm always learning something new about you. So. They didn't answer my question. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm totally not joking. joking. I hope you can go. That'd be great. And if you can't, meh. Maybe I can record it with my phone. I don't think I'll get Maybe, kicked out yeah, for that. Yeah. Only at a tool concert I'd get kicked out for that. Yeah, that's right. That's really odd. So yeah, and talking about new music or he's got well, Odd Space got new. Yeah, new song. Yep. He, yeah, he's. He, I I want to say he, but I'm not sure if he has any other. Yeah, we haven't talked to him yet, so I'm not sure if he. It's just him. I feel like other people help him, or he works with other people, but I. I want to say it's a solo project. Yeah. I'm not positive. I think it is. So if I'm wrong, I believe his name is Joey. And Joey, I apologize if you hear this and you did not want me to say your first name, but it's openly available on the internet. 
So I'm gonna start calling you Joey from Rod Space. But yeah, he's got he's got lots of new stuff going. Oh, dude, this I cannot stop listening to his music. It's it's good. It's I, be beautiful is a good word to yeah. describe it. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah, I'm enjoying it too. And talking about new music, so Pink Sky, we've talked about it a few times. They have a new album released in September, uh, Disenchantment. Yeah, that's out. And it is cool. Check that one out. I love. I we got so close to having them on the show, and maybe something will happen in the future. But I believe they moved out of West. Well, Michigan. maybe a homecoming. We can get them back. Yeah, in the studio. I would maybe. imagine they got roots here, right? It'll come back. Yeah, I would think so. I don't think they'll be strangers to us, but we had a an interview lined up right at the time where they were getting moving and grooving and they got out of here. Yep. They're like, we got better things to do, Michigan, peace. No, I'm sure they weren't like that, but it's all good. I, I hope they're doing well and I hope they're, the move they made was in a good direction for their career. Yeah, definitely. Other new music, uh, Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish just released their album this week. Um, it's called Sick and Tired. Cool. Yep. So they're rocking it out. I know they've been touring and um, we're we'll trying to get in something going with them. Too. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, talk we'll to, see. We'll talk see with Jesse happens. Ray and Paul, the drummer. Um, and then uh, Feeding Grizzlies, who were brought up on the American Hotel, when we talked to Jacob from the American Hotel system, mm -hmm. they have just released a new album. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think Personal Dissonance or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, new music from them as well. So check it out because they because they're gonna play with American Hotel System November seventeenth at the Pyramid Scheme. That's good to go see the Pyramid Scheme. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know if you peruse Reddit often. I do very often. That's the only social media I do. I mean, Facebook I look at like a couple times a month. Reddit I it's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. Last thing I do at night, right? Um, lots of people in the Grand Rapids subreddit of Reddit will ask like, Hey, what's there to do? I'm in town for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. The number one thing, in my opinion, what I, from what I've seen, the number one thing people shout out is go to Pyramid Scheme, play a pinball. And hopefully if you're there at a cool, uh, they show, have shows all the time that dirt cheap, but go there to play the pinball to the bar. And check out a show that is i think the number one thing recommended on reddit's huh. the grand rapids subreddit is check out the pyramid scheme and every i see it almost every other day it's bonkers and i add into that too because i agree that's a cool place to go it is out. yeah definitely a great venue unless you're some ball or staying at like the most expensive hotel and you're like hey i'm just looking for a 500 hundred dollar steak that's it i don't want to go party or Roof Steakhouse. Yeah, right? Like, that's there, too. You can do that. Ruth Chris or whatever. Yeah. Leo's Never Seafood. Been there. Oh, yeah, Leo's. Yeah, Leo's is right across, like, near there, too, which is very hoity-toity, yeah. high-end. I haven't I haven't frequented either. I've been to Leo's before. Yeah. It was good. Just too too nice for my taste. Yeah. Uh, I take it back. I've been to Ruth Chris before, two years ago, and it was it was cool. I did like it. You should go there sometime. Maybe. Or not. They don't have bands playing there. I just grill up my own steak. Are you into, like, grilling steak at all? I, I do like it. I'm not... I'm still trying to perfect that, but, uh... Yes. How much so are you perfecting well, it? Well, like, I mean... Give... Because... I'm, I'm a really into... Um, yeah. like I'm not as good, probably as into it as you. And grilling isn't a thing for like now that I've learned about searing and reverse searing oh. steaks. Oh. So I was curious to what you would say about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I've, searing I've, is important. I've spent my wife like I spend probably more on steaks these days than beer. Well, we used to, and I think we're kind of. I'm actually cutting back on meat a little bit, but the. We've got a quarter of a cow for the last ooh, eight, ten years, probably. Oh, yeah? Every year? No, not every year. It usually lasts a year and a half, two years, depending. On, I mean, different types of It just depends, yeah. You get some burger, you get some steaks, you get some of this, you get some of that. Yeah, and you get a lot of different, yeah. I mean, you get the roasts, you get the, yeah, different cuts. But I'm not sure if we're going to do it again or not. Hmm. But that's why I started 
do it a lot different because you got all these different cuts and you got to you got to I mean there's only so much you can do with certain types of steak. For, that's what I've learned. Yep. Yeah. I've been trying to learn like really good because I love a good freaking steak. And over the years, like yeah. in a restaurant, you know, the best steak I've ever had was and I can't remember. This is terrible. I can't remember the place I had it. It was in Traverse City. It was a, me and my wife stayed at a hotel for our anniversary. It was a, a really nice, cool hotel, and they had a little restaurant in it. The best steak I ever had in my life. It was so good. When they gave us our bill, I was like, "Could I give a high five to the guy that <laughs> cooked the steak? Because I would appreciate that so much." So she got him. He came out, and he was just, just a lonely cook, and he, I, I feel like I made his day because. I was so happy and so excited. I had the best steak of my life. Yeah. And he was like, really, dude? I was like, buddy, this was amazing. And I, yeah, he didn't downplay it at all. He he, yeah. he, he, he knew what he was doing. He yeah. wasn't just like I, I, a lonely cook. He was not a lonely cook. He, I think he was the actual chef of this. It was a pretty nice restaurant. I'm just downplaying that. <laughs> I can't remember the freaking name of it. But one of these days, I'll remember it. Anyways, that got me really into like having good steaks. And that was so many years ago, but slowly over the years, I just got a cast iron uh, skillet in the last year to sear a steak. Okay. I learned about reverse searing steaks in the oven and then on the skillet. Hmm. I learned about grilling it and then searing it. And then another step would be smoking it and searing it and the different, you know, just a little salt and pepper here, a little butter on this and how you sear. Oh, there's just so many ways. I'm finding steaks are just as intricate and delicious as you know a craft beer or whatever. Right, right, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, ribs. I mean, I've never cooked ribs, but ribs have always been one of those things where, like, people talk about it's hard to find a good steak at a restaurant, right? Like, difficult somebody cooking a really good one. Yeah, I I can agree with that. But like ribs for me is this is that. Oh. Like it's very hard for me to find a place that would have good ribs, and so I don't order it that often because I don't have real high expectations for somebody. It, you have no unless you hear of a place that's like, "Hey, Jeff, go to this place that's got amazing ribs." Right. Okay. And there was one place. I mean, there's very few places I really enjoyed to take them, and it's not there anymore. But there was um, a restaurant in Kalamazoo. Mm. Oh, best ribs I ever had in my really? life. I do, mean, do you remember the name of it? Um, or not really. It was something landing. I can't remember the different, uh, like Giddings Landing or something like that. It was, we, it was, it was in Kalamazoo, somewhere. but it's not there anymore. Yeah. It hasn't been there for 20 10 years, years at oh. least. I'll ask my, she, my wife went to, wait a second. Did she go to Western? Yeah, Western. Yeah, yeah, she went to Western. Yeah, yeah. she went to Western. Yeah. I'll ask her. Maybe she, she might even remember. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. We talked about, uh, <laughs> we talked about vessels. We talked about steaks. We talked about some shit, dude. We talked about sphere, and then we talked about Michigan music. Could I give another high five that's Michigan and music related? I would love to give a high five to the Hudsonville High School marching band that we just had a homecoming. Oh yeah, last Friday night, yep. and they played their halftime show, and it was, it was called Road Show. It was awesome. I don't know if anybody listening, I know this is a little outside of what we typically talk about, but it's music. It's Michigan related. Yeah. Hudson Bowl High School, Hudson Bowl Public High School. You guys did a fantastic job. That show was so cool. It was so interesting. It sounded amazing. I loved it. I'm also a, my friends were all in marching band and yeah. I was never actually in marching band. I was doing related things on the sides, but I appreciate that kind of stuff so much. And those kids played their hearts out. It sounded fantastic. They did a great job. Sweet. I know that doesn't really help anybody yeah. else listening to Kudos to this uh, podcast, Mr. Vanderwall. Absolutely. He's Craig there. Vanderwall, he, it, I've known Craig Vanderwall for almost 30 years. If he ever, if he listens to this podcast, he'll know who I am. Thanks, Craig. That was awesome. Did you, did you get to know Craig very much over the years? A little bit, because I mean... Uh, my son played in the band, marching band, for a couple, the first couple of years. He hasn't played the last two years, but yeah, yeah we got to know him a little bit. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Go Eagles. HHS. <laughs>
you enjoyed this episode, check out more episodes on any streaming service out there today, as well as our website, www.themittenmusic.com. You can also find playlists and concert listings there, too. Check us out on social medias, uh, Facebook and Instagram. 